Well, hello. I have a robot. It's in this box. Uh, today, I'm going to build a little tiny quadrupedal walking robot. It's an Arduino-based DIY kit. It takes about an hour, and I'm going to have a lot of fun doing this. Let's see what's in the box. Okay, we got some baggage. First bag, we have, these are all of our servos. These are Tower Pro MG90Ss, so these are Metal Gear servos. Pretty nice, I, there should be eight in this kit. And we have another bag. This is our electronics kit. We have a remote, so this is IR controlled. There's, you can hack in an app and do it from your phone, but you'd have to add a Bluetooth module to this kit. Uh, what else we got in here? We got an Arduino, we have a custom PCB. Let's, let's go ahead and actually get in here. Okay, so we have a four cell battery bank. Our Arduino, which is conveniently already mounted in our PCB. Every pin on this Arduino is broken out, which is quite nice. And over here we have uh, nine servo pins. So we only need eight, but you have one extra one if you want to add uh, you know, an end effector or, or some neat little tool to robot. The beauty of this being an open source kit is that the whole thing is hackable. All the files are available online and you can do whatever you want with it. You can make it your own. This is a uh, ultrasonic distance sensor. So we can program the Arduino to, you know, sense walls, whatever you want it to do. And we've got our remote, and here's the IR sensor hiding in the bag. We're just gonna leave that all bagged up for now, because we'll, we'll need it later. We have all of our laser cut parts. Slow down, Turbo. Remove masking tape from parts. Ooh, that takes time. We'll do that anyway. Oh yeah, a little bit of hardware. Oh, look at the tiny little wrench. Oh, it's so cute. So, while there is a manual, it's a little small for me. So, uh, in advance of this, I made a big manual. So let's uh, let's take our first look inside. We have a little uh, a little friend to help us along the way. Let's get our wood out here and and start building. So these are laser cut parts, and why they mask it like this? I think I brought a tool. Is so uh, you can see all the smoke that comes through when you you blast with the laser, and it it can make the edges of your parts not look so nice. They use a a, a big industrial roll of masking tape that's rather expensive in my experience, but totally worth it if you do a lot of laser cutting like I do. So all these parts are MDF. Oh geez, this is gonna take forever. I might just skip this part. I think we'll do a little montage and uh, I'm gonna pop out all these parts and prep all the pieces and then we'll get to assembly. Before I do that, let me tell you about our sponsor. Private Internet Access is a VPN that encrypts all of your internet traffic and uses a safe, protected IP. Connect up to five devices, Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Linux, featuring an internet kill switch that keeps you in control of your connection. Try risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee at the link below. I really need to find myself more of these kits so I can build them myself. Like, we have a laser here, I have my laser. MDF is cheap, and all these parts are really cheap. I always found the problem with kits like this is you build it once and then you're like, ah, oh, this is neat. I'll use it for, you know, a week and be really, really happy with it, and then it ends up on a shelf and sits around. But uh, with the advent of Arduinos and all these reprogrammable little computers, if you stop loving it, you just tear it apart. Use the parts for other things, like these 9G servos. They're ubiquitous, you can use them in anything. So there are multiple different types of ped, so to speak. So pedal as in walking. Uh, we are bipedal. This is a quadruped, so it has four legs. There are hexapods and octopods, and it, it, it keeps going up and up and up. So this one has two degrees of freedom per leg. We have a rotate right here around this axis, and then we have a lift axis that's actually going to be in the arm. You'll see us build that a little bit later. So we're a little limited compared to some, but it's enough to jog around, or you know, if you're just trying to build a little kit for a kid, you know, you want to have a fun little hobby to, to sit down for an afternoon and teach a kiddo how to, you know, follow instructions. I mean, it's the first step. And then you can get to modifying it, make it your own. Have fun. That's my favorite part. So this entire project is actually off of a place called Tindy. It's like Etsy for nerds. Highly suggest it. We'll have it linked down in the doobly-doo. Uh, the Meepad was de designed by Scott Pierce, and uh, he's a, a maker based in Idaho who was making kits for something called the Me Arm. It's a 
very similar to this, like three degrees of freedom robotic arm. And uh, as he was making a little money selling these open source kits, as, as he was allowed to, he decided he wanted to give back. And he made this lovely kit for all of us. I looked back through the history of him developing this kit and it had long gangly arms and a couple different versions. But uh, here we are with the little kit that you can get for under a hundred bucks. It's hard to say no to building a robotics project for under a hundred bucks. Like, the amount of fun you'll get out of this is definitely worth it in my opinion. But we'll see, we still have to build. So with all these parts cut, we're ready to, uh, to start assembling. Okay, we've got eight zeroed servos. Moving on, what do we got next? I do believe that is leg assembly. Repeat this step one, nine, four times. Yeah, well, that's what you get for trusting the internet. Okay, so we've got uh, these four panels made. We're going to now make the leg assembly. It says don't tighten these, which I don't believe. You want your servos to be rigid. So I'm gonna keep doing that, and if the servo fails, then it's my fault. Moving on. My pliers are now magnetized, so anytime I try to release this nut into the slot it needs to go in, it just comes back out. Really the darkest timeline. All hail. Oh, that was a bear. We've got four legs. We're getting there. What a slog. Moving on. Got these guys. Got a random blank page in the manual for some reason. Body assembly. There are those pieces I didn't know what they were for. And, oh look, that same fastener I hate so much. Last nylock. Ooh, okay. Fa the number of fasteners fits. It's a good sign. So definitely still needs to pivot. Nicer than that. We're getting real close, Andy. I can feel it. I'm getting excited. I'm starting to actually see it move too, which is kind of cool. Little spider's almost there, buddy. I'm at the point where I'm skipping fasteners that I've struggled with on the other parts of this build. Because not only do I think I can get away with it, but also I just don't have the time. Okay, we've got the battery on. And second to last page. We're putting in the ultrasonic sensor, which goes here. And then we are ready to power on. Plugs are definitely like bigger than the pitch. So they're starting to fan in. And our final port, S8. Now there's one S9 on here, so if you want to add one thing down the line, you can. After your meat pad is fully assembled and all the servo Mars are plugged in, a bunch of blah, 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 plug-in batteries. Uh, okay, I have those conveniently in my pocket. I'm gonna plug in our batteries. Now, it lets out the magic smoke. I did a bad job. If it works, I did a great job. Hmm. It's not good. I'm not seeing any lights lighting up. Hmm. Oh, there's a power switch. Ah. Hey. Hey. Oh. It's definitely doing something. Let's see here. Uh, walk. 
turn walk to his wave. It's receiving me, but it's not doing anything. The servos are moving. He's thinking about it. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. So uh, up, walk forward. Nope, down, left, right. Hmm. You know what, I might have done the joints a little tight. That's the only thing I can think of. I think I might be low voltage. That might be my problem. Okay, start with fresh batteries. That's always rule one, which I did not follow. Dead boys, fresh boys. Ooh, they're still warm. Very fresh. Hmm. Well, that's slightly disappointing. If you have no load on it, it works just fine. I tried real hard. As far as the build goes, pretty straightforward. But uh, I wish it worked better right out of the box. <laughs> it's trying so hard. I'll mess around with it a little bit later. Nonetheless, oh, we got a wave. Yep. A little tinkering, I think it'd be just fine. All in all, uh, thanks for watching. Get subscribed to Short Circuit and uh, see you in the next one.